most celebrated and decorated light aircraft carriers, is floating in the Mississippi River tonight, a rusting old hulk slated for the scrap heap. But a movement is afoot to keep the cabin afloat. Historians want to preserve her as a national monument, and paranormal researchers believe that there are many ghosts aboard the Cabot that must be heard before the Cabot is destroyed. She was a floating landing strip in the vast Pacific, a beacon for sailors and their tomb. She may have won the war, but the great ship that Ernie Pyle dubbed the Iron Woman will soon lose the battle for her own survival. The USS Cabot is the last World War II aircraft carrier of her kind. She was a war horse, and her upper deck was the last thing many sailors saw before they died. Since the war, strange spectral visions have haunted the Iron Woman. Visitors see shadows, unearthly forms, and report a strange sense of being followed. And yet, when they turn around, no one's there. The haunting is thought to have its roots in the ship's darkest day, November 25th, 1944. That particular day was very rough. Uh, the Hancock had taken a kamikaze. We took two. The Intrepid took one. The next thing I knew, I was sitting in a fiery furnace due to the fact that the plane had crashed into the deck just on the port side and huge explosions and fire and flames and smoke. Captain Howard Skidmore was next in line on the flight deck when the kamikaze pilot barreled into the cabin. Skidmore watched many of his shipmates die. 35 were lost, killed. Some were blown overboard, never found. And some died a day or so later, and so there were two or three uh, burials at sea. The men never knew what hit them. And that may be why, some hypothesize, there are souls here set adrift by this historic ship. Bill Halsey, the admiral of the fleet, recommended the cabot uh, for a presidential unit citation. Eventually, the Iron Woman was decommissioned from the U.S. Navy. Renamed the Dodalo, she spent 22 years as the flagship of the Spanish Navy. And during that time, the haunting activity aboard the old carrier intensified. The Spanish government, some of the crew members talked about it, and they had their own rumors of, uh, of, the, of the ghost uh, being f freely roaming around the various quarters of the ship. In 1989, the Cabot came home again. Spain donated the ship to a foundation that had ambitious plans to turn the Iron Woman into a floating museum. The USS Cabot has an enormous uh, tradition and history. It should be preserved. Even though the foundation raised a lot of money, didn't raise sufficient enough money. So what has happened is now that the foundation has gotten its, into some financial problems, the, alternatively, they have no other choice but then to sell it for scrap. And as time runs out for the USS Cabot, the strange onboard encounters have increased. As we were going up the stairs, I just I had an overwhelming feeling to turn around and I felt like someone was looking at me and when I turned around I saw a man and I knew immediately that he was a ghost uh, there was no color to him but I knew what I was looking at I was so amazed sightings of the shadowy form in uniform are on the rise leading paranormal investigators to surmise that there is a connection between increased haunting activity and the scrapping of the ship. Entities that die suddenly do not know where they are or where they should go, so they remain in that particular site as well. Larry Montz has assembled a team of investigators to survey the cabin. We will be taking meter readings and electromagnetic readings and taking Polaroids to see what we can capture. The psychic investigative team will be walking behind us. The three psychics have been given no information about the ship's bloody rendezvous with the kamikaze. The investigative team will operate below decks where there is no electricity and therefore no visual cues. They will not know what part of the ship they are in at any given time. The goal is for the psychics to rely on their intuitive side for information. Yeah, the temperature is going down. Yeah. Montz is trying to determine if hits on his equipment, indicating physical changes in the ship's environment, will correspond to psychic hits. Almost immediately, 
Bontz records a drop in temperature at the site of the first psychic hit. There's several entities. They're crew members. The cold spot begins to move, and the team follows it. It's one of the larger cold spots that I have felt in a long time. The psychics don't know it yet, but they are moving toward the site where the kamikaze impacted the cabin. I strongly feel a sensation of, like, fire. Now the activity is coming to life on that lower deck, and it's blasting out at us. It's coming right directly towards us. This is very, a very active area in here. As the team moves toward the bow, the psychics again feel a strange agitation. There is a sharp spike on one of the magnetometers. It's like pins, pins, like all, all up and down. In press. It's painful. Instead of being cold in this room, I feel exceedingly hot. A ship historian later confirmed that the psychics were correct. This was the exact point of impact. And when the team enters this area, the psychic and scientific hits come in a flurry. You can see him bandaged, I can see blood, and um, it's almost like they're removing pieces of metal from his arm or something. Another accurate reading, the team has located the impact point of a bomb that gutted the ship and killed an officer. The psychics feel the officer's presence is permeating several areas of the ship, and groping in the darkness, they try to follow his trail. Suddenly, they stop dead in their tracks. The entity is strongest here. Unbeknownst to them, this is the same place where Jill Alexander experienced her vision of a phantom sailor. He is here now. I am getting tremendous amounts of tingling through my arms. He is slightly up the top of the stairs. Yeah, I have stairs. I have oh, one of the most powerful yeah. entities on this ship. Oh. Are the simultaneous instrument spikes and psychic hits merely a coincidence? Investigators just don't know yet. But if the ship were saved, she could become a rich laboratory for further paranormal experimentation. Paranormal investigator Larry Montz believes that the haunting activity felt aboard the USS Cabot is caused by the spirits of the sailors who died suddenly while aboard the Iron Woman. He believes that these spirits may not know where they are or where to go, and that before the ship is scrapped, further investigations must be conducted to help the remaining spirits find their way out.